Which of these is the hardest algorithm asked in coding interviews? Is it A, Dijkstra's algorithm or B, Prim's algorithm or C, dynamic programming? The answer from my experience of giving more than 100 interviews is dynamic programming. That's because DP is both hard and frequently asked in the interviews at the same time. Technically speaking, DP is not an algorithm. It's actually a problem solving technique. In my journey to solve 554 lead code problems, DP is what took me the longest time to master. In this video, I'm going to make dynamic programming as simple as do some problem for you. Let's do this. There are five steps to solve any DP problem. Let's start with the first step, which is to make assumption. Most people learn to solve DP problems by breaking them into sub problems. And when you try to do that, the approach becomes quite mathematical and hard to understand. That's why, instead of thinking in terms of sub-problems, I recommend making an assumption. That's because we already have a lot of practice making assumptions in real life when we judge other people. I know it doesn't make any sense right now. So let's try to understand this with the help of one of the most popular DP problems called longest increasing subsequence. There are two reasons why I picked this problem. One, this problem is neither too hard not too easy. This gives us a great opportunity to think through the solution together. Number two, I could not solve this problem when a friend gave it to me for the first time. When I could not solve this problem, he told me that I would never be able to crack coding interviews at big tech companies if I could not solve such easy problems. In hindsight, that did not age very well. So by choosing this problem, I want to give hope to people who are scared of coding interviews. In the longest increasing subsequence problem, you need to return the longest sequence of numbers that appear in an increasing order in the array. If you look at this example, 0, 1, 2, and 3 appear in an increasing order, which is our longest subsequence. So the answer is the length of this subsequence, which is 4. Notice that the numbers in the subsequence don't need to be next to each other. They just need to show up in the increasing order. If you understand the problem, let's discuss the assumption we need to make to solve this problem. The basic assumption you need to make when using dynamic programming is that you already know the answer. Not the answer to the given problem, but some other problem that is similar to the given problem. Let me explain with the help of an example. Let's go back to the longest increasing subsequence problem. What if we assume that we already know the length of the longest increasing subsequence of all the numbers except the last one. That length would be 3 for the subsequence 0, 1 and 2. And now I will give you the last number which is 3. Can you tell me the length of longest increasing subsequence of all the numbers including the last one? Pause the video and take a moment to think. The answer the answer is, you cannot. That's because you just know the length of the subsequence. You don't know the sequence itself. If you knew that longest increasing subsequence so far is 0, 1 and 2, since 3 is larger than 2, 3 can be added to the end of current longest increasing subsequence. So the answer would be current length plus 1, which is 4. If you think from the first principles, you can see why this assumption did not work. The problem that you assumed you know the answer to is actually the same as the original problem. Finding the length of longest increasing subsequence for first n numbers is not that different from knowing it for n plus 1 numbers. The main point I am trying to make here is that the original problem and the assumed problem have to be somewhat different for dynamic programming to work. My goal here is to show you the thinking process rather than giving you the solution. So if you're learning something new, do subscribe to the channel. Even though we did not find the solution yet, we have learned something very important here. If you remember, we compared 3 to the highest number in the longest subsequence so far to decide whether the subsequence can be expanded by adding 3 to it. So knowing where a subsequence ends is very important to solve this problem. With this in mind, which other problem can we assume that we know the answer to? We cannot assume that we already know the longest subsequence for the first n numbers because that would be the same problem as the original problem. But we have already found out that we need to know the ending number of a subsequence to decide whether we can expand it. What if we knew the length of the longest increasing subsequence ending at each index of the array? Would that help us? Take a moment to think about it. Imagine that you already know the length of the longest increasing subsequence ending at every index except the last one. How would you get the longest increasing subsequence ending at the last index? We can go through all the numbers starting from the left. If the number is smaller than the last number which is 3, the subsequence ending at the left number can be expanded by adding 3. The length of the expanded sequence would be the current length plus 1. Maximum length of all such expanded subsequences would be the length of the longest increasing subsequence ending at the last index. So far, we have just assumed that we know the length of the longest increasing subsequence ending at every index except the last one. But to actually solve the problem, we need to make our assumption real. But how do we do that? It's actually very simple. You must have noticed me saying the same phrase, except the last one 
again and again. The answer lies in this very simple phrase. You see, if you take just the first two numbers of the array into consideration, the second number would be the last one. If you take only the first three numbers into the consideration, the third number would be the last one, and so on. We will start by looking at only the first two numbers and forget that other numbers exist. Now using the second number as the last one, we will find the length of the longest increasing subsequence ending at the second number. Then we take first three numbers into consideration. Using the third number as the last one, we will find the length of the longest increasing subsequence ending at the third number. We will keep doing this until we cover the entire array. In the end, we will have the longest increasing subsequence ending at every index of the array. Now for the answer of the original question, we don't care about which index the subsequence ends at. So we take the maximum of longest subsequences ending at every index and that would be our final answer. If you understand that, let's move on to the next step which is defining the recursive rule. Recursive rule is just a fancy way of formalizing what we have already discussed. To find the length of the longest increasing subsequence ending at the current last index, we go through all the indices to the left of it. If the number at the left index is smaller than the number at the current last index, subsequence ending at left index can be expanded by 1. If the length of the newly expanded subsequence is larger than the longest subsequence ending at the current last index, we update the longest subsequence length ending at the current last last index. That's your recursive rule. Next, we need to define the base case. To make your recursive rule work, you need to set your variables to some initial value. That is what we call the base case. It will all start making more sense once we get to the implementation phase. We have already seen that in order to solve the problem, all we are doing is expanding subsequences ending at a particular index. For the base case, we need to find the initial value of length of the longest increasing subsequence ending at every index. What do you think is the initial length? Before we do any expansion, pause the video and take a moment to think. Each number by itself can be seen as a subsequence of length 1, ending at its own index. And this subsequence is an increasing subsequence because it has only one number. So the initial length for the longest increasing subsequence ending at any index would be 1. If you understand everything that we have covered so far, the implementation becomes quite straightforward. You want to store the length of the longest increasing subsequence ending at every index. For that, you will need an array called longest increasing subsequence or LIS. As we discussed earlier, in the base condition, the length of the longest increasing subsequence ending at any index is 1. Moving on, we also have a variable that stores the answer. As I mentioned before, we don't care where the subsequence ends. So we can initialize our answer to maximum of all the numbers in LIS array, which is 1 in the beginning. Now we have a for loop that decides how many numbers of the array are we considering at the current time. In the beginning, we are considering only the first two numbers. So we start the loop at the index 1. In the end, we want to consider all the numbers. So the loop ends at the last index. Inside this loop, we have another loop that goes through all the numbers on the left of the current last number. If the number at the left index is less than the current last number, we try to update the length of the longest increasing subsequence at the current last index. Once the internal loop finishes, we have found the length of the longest increasing subsequence ending at the current last index. In case this length is longer than the current answer, we want to update the answer. Once the outer loop is complete, we want to return the answer. Other than db, Many people also find solving binary tree problems very difficult. If you are one of them, watch this video where I solve a binary tree problem asked in an Amazon interview in just one line. My name is Sahil and I'll see you in the next one.